the Glass Cannon Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Voyagers of the Jump, where we will voyage through all of the jumps. Not really, but thank you anyway for joining us on uh, what is going to be, uh, what we are going to say is, let's say, voyage through this original traveler adventure together. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> great intro so far. <laughs> yeah, right, you are right, crushing right. this. It's it's like we it's like we do this all the time. It's like, a prof- like I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been thinking like because I've been as I've been prepping this uh, space adventure in the far flung future uh, about you know space stories and different kinds of space stories, and I got to thinking. Mate, what what are all of your favorite space stories? Now I have some rules for this because I wanted to keep the conversation you know, in check. Uh, but I'm thinking of like a single self-contained story. So if it's a not Star Trek, but like one episode, or if it's not like a book series, but like one book or one short story or something, does everyone have, and it doesn't, and I'll preface this by saying, I understand preferences are fluid. You might, it might be your favorite right now at this moment, may not be your favorite tomorrow or ever again, or it could just be a favorite. I don't want to make, make be di- you know, be really didactic about this, but like, does anyone have, people have a a story that they like. Sydney, you're nodding enthusiastically. <laughs> well, yeah, because I have I have two, but they're very short, and I'll be I'll be brief. But I like I think in all general like sci-fi space stuff, I like when it's like subversive. So my first one that I thought of was the Twilight Zone: How to Serve Man episode, Ooh. where it was oh, like yeah. that was Outer Ale- Limits actually. Oh, really? I think I think it was Outer Limits. Yeah. I just loved it. I mean, like the whole idea, the whole concept of aliens, I, there's such a specific image. And then when stuff is like, ah, 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 it's actually not what you thought. So I really like that. And then recently I saw Prometheus and the movie is, it is good. It's, there's some good, there's some bad. I won't say anything about the film itself, but I thought the idea of aliens being our creators, the creators of man and going to find that and then just being so unbelievably disappointed and <laughs> like what a funny but like By the events and the film uh, both <laughs> and, the, and the ending and the beginning um but no i just think the concept of that is like a, a very dark comedy which i i think is rare for sci-fi um but i really enjoyed both of those as like little snippets are you talking about the yeah. to serve to serve man episode of, of Twilight Zone? Yeah, where they find the cookbook yeah. and they think yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. They, the aliens it's will. Zone. Yeah, it's yeah. I just, it, oh, it is Twilight Zone. Okay. It's Twilight Zone. I just rewatched it actually. Uh, oh, it's so good. I was I listened. There was an episode of the uh, it was Imaginary Worlds podcast where they talked about Rod Serling, and I got then I went I got on a Twilight Zone kick after that. So I watched Ooh, a bunch of episodes. I'll have to listen to that podcast. Ooh. I don't know it. It's really it was it's a good great podcast, but it was really interesting. It looks at him specifically and his how his i mean like the, the most basic biographical reading of a creator but it's it's real it, with, with rod serling it's like really you can pinpoint all of the things he was pulling from his past whenever for all of his work um hmm. yeah it's great um well thank you for that who else anybody else have a favorite they want to share with the group I do. um oh you go ahead Seth. oh, oh well, thank you <laughs> um it's uh, it's the expanse. Uh, so in the show, it would be like season one, part of two. But in the book, it's just Leviathan Wakes, and it's actually the journey of Detective Miller, uh, yeah. who mm-hmm. who starts off as this kind of crappy, corrupt cop who's chasing water thieves, and like his whole voyage to where the end, he's like wandering through this runaway alien piloted space station, calling a nuke in some sort of dreamland nightmare on this obsessive quest. Uh, I really love that. I also have like, I kind of like, I kind of like a dude crush on Thomas Jane. So I love anything. <laughs> I love he Thomas does. Jane. So I'm with like, you there. Yeah. You, you always get one extra star if, if, if Thomas Jane was in the role. So it's like, I, I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, we, I have a are, quick, I have a quick Tom Jane story. Please. Um, so, you know, I, when I was roommates with, with Nick Lowe at Marvel, uh, I used to get invites to all, they would have Marvel employee screenings for all the Marvel movies that would come out. 
And uh, so there, there were kind of few and far between early on. It was like Spider-Man 2, Daredevil, and then Punisher. Like we went to the Punisher movie and they're pretty low key affairs for the most part. But Punisher was the first movie where some of the people that were in the movie actually came and like spoke uh, before the screening. And uh, I think Rebecca Romaine was sick, supposedly. So she didn't, she was supposed to be there, but she didn't show. But Tom Jane showed up and he got up in front of everybody and he was visibly like very sort of nervous. And he was like talking about how he would go to sleep at night with his flashlight under his covers, like reading old like Spider Man and Fantastic Four and what a nerd he was. And he was just like, I'm one of you. You are the people that I most want to enjoy this. And it was the first time anybody had done that. And I will never forget it. Like it will, that will, that memory will stick with me for the rest of my life. I love that guy. So I'm with you there, Seth. He is awesome. Isn't Roy Scheider the dad in that, in that Punisher movie? Is he? Uh, I'm like 99% he, sure. Like Frank wow. Castle Sr. or something. Isn't, I, I mean, he doesn't Ray last very long, but. I punish oh. sharks. You punish criminals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for that Tom Jane aside. It's good. Yeah. I feel like we should always have a Tom Jane aside. There should always, should whatever his name better. comes up. I have other stories. We'll okay, great. Well, we'll yeah. just, let's endeavor to make that a recurring <laughs> segment of the show. <laughs> Alicia, um, do, do you have a favorite? Um, yeah. Okay. So favorites difficult. And I think I will go before skid because I'm sure skid has many stories to tell that are way better than mine. So I'm going to shoehorn no. myself in. <laughs> um, I, saying a favorite is obviously very difficult. So like I said, I'll just, I'll, I'm trying to think of like my favorite, like moments in sci-fi shows that just pop into my head. And for some reason, this is the one that pops in my head. And I know all of you that like Star Trek will know this episode. It was, um, Star Star Trek. It was Next Generation. It was like season four. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I love Q. Always have. Because oh, yeah. he's like, a, he's a space troll. He shows up at the most <laughs> opportune moments. He's a jerk. Like, I, 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 growing up, I thought he was hilarious. And he's super powerful. And he just bring in and be like, you know what? I don't like how this is happening. And he would just screw it up. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. It was the episode where he picked up that like, Picard had, I guess, like an old girlfriend or an ex-love or something. And they were dealing with like real problems of space and ships. But Q is like, yeah, I'm bored. So I'm going to transport you all to the set of Robin Hood. Oh, and you yes. Had Worf, I love that episode, yes. And Worf dressed this thing. And he's like, let's just eat, drink, and be merry. He's like, yes. I'm not a merry man. I am not a merry man. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a lute. And he was playing it. And then somebody he took it and like smashed it against a tray. And I was like, I love Michael Doran's character. He's so, so well done. He's yeah. so great. <laughs> Matthew and I were just talking about how great Michael Doran is a few days ago. And that moment oh. is so great. I think it's Jordy is playing the lute. And he just oh, walks yeah. over and he smashes Smash it. He's like, it. Smash sorry. It's, a tree. it's so <laughs> funny. That it was is, just so funny. Go ahead. Well, I was like, that episode is how they get Q into Deep Space Nine. Oh, oh, you're in the right. First season. Oh. Yeah, they, you're absolutely. Oh. oh my gosh, I totally forgot that you're right. Oh, that wow. was. It was just. It was just super funny, and I have a really quick. I think Worf sort of factoid hasn't Worf been in the most episodes of Star Trek than any other character? I think something like that. I feel like you're right. That must has be true. true. That has he's to be true. I, I think yeah. he's been at least the most series, but yeah, probably the yeah. most episodes because he's been in the most series. So yeah. 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 Oh yeah. God, I love Worf. That's, that's and, one of my favorites. We were talking about how how great Michael Dorn is, and how like <laughs> like where why is Michael Dorn is such a wonderful actor? Like why why hasn't he like had a career beyond Worf? And maybe he doesn't want right? to. I think he has like planes and he's a private pilot or something. But he's so wonderful, and I love him so right? much. Yeah, yeah. Know. He does a ton of like voice work. Voice but, work, yes. But you don't okay. see him a lot in other things, and I just yeah, I think he just he enjoys really shares his life. that voice. Yeah. <laughs> and he, yeah. I know that he, he appeared, like he'll go to, like I, I met him once at um, Salt Lake City Comic Con and he was like sitting in the green room by himself and he's, he's actually kind of big dude, sort of ish. And I'm um, yeah, like he's, <laughs> he's taller, he's taller. <laughs> and he's quiet, like super quiet. And I was just like, ah, it's warm. Ah! That's awesome. Fangirling. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Oh. 
God, there's so many, like, we could just do, we could just do this conversation about Worf and I probably, would be, I would be a very, very happy person. Yeah. <laughs> and there was like for Worf too, not to, for another aside, but the, the thing about, the, there was a problem that they would run into with Worf uh, er, er, most of the early seasons. And this is a common sort of editorial thing that anyone who's like sort of custodians of, a, of characters will have to watch out for. So I like Nick and uh, Andy and like at Marvel, like they would talk about this kind of thing all the time when they would bring in a new adversary to show how tough they were, they would have them beat up Worf. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it, the, but the effect was like Worf just kept getting beaten up like, yeah. like in the early oh episodes. My gosh, you're right. So you're like, what's the, what's the big deal about Worf? And it's like, that's something you have to like guard against if you're trying to protect a character. Well, because he's supposed to be so awesome and so such a great warrior. So to show how great the bad guy is, they have to kick Worf's butt, which right. now means the audience, all they see is Worf all just they see constantly is losing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, this is not going to be my favorite, but like a season seven gem is the one, there's the, the, the screwy timeline episode for Worf where he's coming back oh, from like the Batleth tournament. And he, oh, yes. And it, I love that one. And every time they restart, he has like has a different result in the tournament. My favorite is my favorite log entry is like many combatants were maimed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the delivery. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So good. So good. Um, maybe we'll we'll have a Tom Jane aside and also a Michael Dorn aside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it going. All right, it's good. Lay it uh, on. Well, I love classic sci-fi uh, very much, and so when you gave us this assignment last night, the first thing, well, actually, the first thing that's left to mind is the new Star Trek: Strange New Worlds, which I know Matthew and I have been enjoying quite a bit. Loving it. Uh, fantastic show. I think episode nine of that show might be my favorite. Uh, fantastic show if you haven't watched it. It's a great trek. Uh, check it out. But I think, like, as far as, like, one contained story, I love the movie uh, Forbidden, Forbidden Planet, um, which is sort of, it provided sort of a template for Star Trek uh, when it came out in the 1950, 1954, I think. And it's, if you haven't seen it, it is one of the great classic sci-fi movies of, of all time. And it's this, you know, spaceship, this uh, the, the Federation style like spaceship. And they come across this uh, planet and they, they have this weird adventure. This planet was like, uh, sort of you find out it was populated by this ancient species called the Krell with this like impossibly advanced mm -hmm. tech. And it's sort of loosely based on Shakespeare's Tempest, and it's it's so great. The one problem is though, and it, like, and also the special effects and the art design is so so wonderful, and especially some of the animation for some of the stuff that happens is so 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 good, and the music and everything. The one problem is watching it now, especially as uh, in contrast to Trek, is it's like so it's like this is the Earth's kind of. Uh, ambassadorial space force and it's all white guys really so it's like <laughs> this is something that's like a little jarring like watching it today oh, it's also it's leslie <laughs> nielsen's in a serious role so the whole time right. you're expecting him to be like and don't call me shirley or something right. Right? Yeah, I know. it's like he plays it straight the entire time that can throw people off too um but uh that aside it really is just i love it so much uh i watch it anytime it's on i watch it like every couple months or something i love it i haven't seen it in a while i really should re i watched it in high school i don't think i've seen it since it's so good i should rewatch it too yeah me too there's a there's a sequel like there's a b movie isn't there like a return to the forbidden planet oh is there i didn't know about but that. it's like I feel like there's like a B movie sequel. Anyway, the Worcester Group, the theater, the, the, like the famed the downtown theater troupe in New York, did a thing where they were like they were like staging pieces that where they would like match the performances of recording recordings behind them, and they did one with like the Richard Burton Hamlet. But I think they did one with Return of the Forbidden Planet, and it was it was a and they're all like oh, in wow. silver lame. It, it was oh it that's was, awesome. It was fun. Wow, um, it was like three actors who do everything. Um, Anyway, um, my, I, I, I pose this question to you mostly because I was just curious and also because like we're still, like as we're going through this, I wanted to make sure we're like tailoring the adventure of the stuff you guys like. Um, so it was a little bit of a fishing expedition, but also I, I didn't have a good answer, I realized. 
Um, yeah, also, because like, I don't know, where like I, I when I posed the question to you, I was like, what would my answer to this would be would probably be like something really, like I, I, I would choose like inner light or something really obvious that I just love. But um, so I decided to spotlight two things that I happen to be thinking about today that are both one I one I will stand by and one I don't know if I could stand by because I haven't seen it in a long, long time. But there's so as some people here might know, I'm a big uh, I was a huge fan of the Star Wars expanded universe, the the canon that existed before the the sequels came out, um, and especially there were the the Han Solo our origin story trilogy is just so by AC Crispin is just so, so much fun. And the the Mm -hmm. second one whose title now I'm forgetting, but is, is essentially Han in his early smuggling years on when he's living on Nar Shaddaa, he's hanging, like he's met, he's met Chewie. They're working together. Like he he and Chewie don't trust each other yet. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, is it Han Solo at galaxy's end? Is that what it is? What is, hold on. I'll look it up right now. It's the Han Solo Chronicles. I believe. Um, but the, and, oh, uh, and he meets Lando in it. It's before he has the Falcon. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, but there's a, they find out that the, 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 uh, the empire is going to basically destroy the smuggler's moon of Nar Shaddaa where they, where they all live. And uh, it's called the hut gambit. Um, and they basically want to punish the empire wants to punish the huts, but they can't attack uh, now how to uh, directly so they're going to destroy the smugglers moon and all the smugglers uh band together to fight to like fend off the imperial navy oh um, that's cool and like you know they're they're like buying off certain people and then they're like building ships and it's it's so much fun it's such it's such a great story and um, i'm a big fan so that one i stand by the one um i don't know if i stand by is i when i was young i was a big i was like a devoted watcher i think i was like literally like seven years old of the show space above and beyond. Did you, did you, <laughs> you remember this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they did a space battle to the Ramones. Yes, they did. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, it was like all I remember. It was oh. considered an oldie on the show because it took place in the future. So they're like, oh yeah, that antique rock and roll CD. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> CD. Yeah, they, it's, somebody had a CD and they're like, oh, it's an antique. And it was funny. It was a new technology in the 90s. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's an episode where they're, so they're basically, it's like it's mar- the Marines on an aircraft carrier and they're, um, and they get, they're doing this like planetary invasion. They have this massive invasion happening. And then kind of in the middle of it, uh, the, the aircraft carrier and the fleet gets called away and they have like, they could go to a different planet and assist in a different invasion where like, if they succeed in that, it will change the course of the war or something, but they basically have to abandon like all of these people who are on this planet fighting this battle. And they just leave them with no contact for like an extended period of time. And you're following, you're the main characters who are part of the invasion force who is like, they just slowly run out of supplies and they slowly like lose everything. And oh, I've heard about, I've never seen it, but I've heard about that episode. And the, I mean, they, I'll tell you the twi- I'll spoil it because there's the twist is that like the so the the leader who's the the captain and she's calling she's like making ra- they're like they send a radio transmission every day at a certain time and at a certain point they the radio breaks but she doesn't tell anyone because she wants to inspire hope oh. so she keeps making the radio transmission and oh. then at the, at the very end they like they, they they everyone discovers and it's about to fall apart and then the fleet shows up and rescues them oh um, cool. And the, like oh the last God. scene is they're sitting in like the infirmary because they've been all, everyone's just like in terrible shape and they're all just kind of sitting there and they're like feels like we're forgetting to do something right and it's like are we missing something and then you just see the captain who's like had to hold it together for everybody just kind of sitting in her bunk just kind of like look over at the clock and it's the time she would the radio every day and she doesn't say anything it's so good it's so wow. good wow wow oh, I remember it I remember it like like that even though I haven't seen it in twenty years okay <laughs> anyway. You watch this as a child, man. <laughs> you know, what? Yeah. It was as I, as I think about it now, it was like weirdly like jingoistic as a show, and it was like very into war. And it was I don't know. So I did not my not my ideal kind of sci-fi now, but at the time I was really into it. Yeah. Um, well, I was anyway. watching Darkwing Duck when you were watching that. So. Oh, I also partook I, of Darkwing. I was Duck. watching both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, should we play Traveler? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not? That's what we're here for. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Um, so when last we we when last we all saw everyone, we were uh, building our characters. We ended, and you all went off and continued your character creation. Um, and we're going to get to that. But for now, I just kind of want to jump in, and we'll catch it. We'll catch ourselves up. So we'll we'll get to meet everyone and find out what happened. But for now, 
You all find yourselves on the world of Garda Villas. This is in the Villas subsector. Uh, and I'm quoting from the book Behind the Claw now. The world itself is large with a tainted atmosphere and extensive ocean coverage. This still leaves plenty of room for the populace numbering somewhat more than 470 million. The majority dwell on the world's continent, mostly on the world's main continent, mostly around the coast. And today it's a temperate, clear, if somewhat balmy day and the wind off the sea to the north cools the sunny stretch of road of the, of the main star town. And the air is breathable and Though some of you might find that the atmosphere here irritates your nose a little bit, and onworlders tend not to notice, but if you're visiting, and you can't see it from here, but some miles to the southwest of the downpour and the star town is a large lake that's a popular weekend getaway, or was until recent rebel activity reached that far north. And uh, directly from the south of here is the famed Mosaic Desert, which is the largest desert on this world. Uh, and at this particular moment, sitting under an umbrella at a cafe, along the main drag of the star town, we see, well, Alicia, Seth, who do we see? <laughs> uh, you see, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you see Georgina Kershawn. She is about 5'4". She has this reed, I like to say the early 90s Madonna body, that runner, that reedy sort of runner type body. She has a very recognizable red mullet. Ooh. It's well, it's well cut, yes, well coiffed. She has bright blue eyes. She's wearing a gray distressed like muscle shirt, sleeves cut off, and cargo <laughs> pants. She's sort of sitting back. She has aviator sunglasses on, her arms crossed and her legs crossed, and she's just regarding everyone at the table. Where's How our drink? <laughs> <laughs> Um, how did the rest of character creation go for you? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we left off where she was, she had just found out that her Aslan college boyfriend was in fact on tour, but with a Varger woman with six large breasts. She got word somehow. She found out that he was cheating on her. But at the same time, I decided to retcon myself a little bit. She had a dream that something happened to her sister. And that's when she realized there is really nothing for me here. Unfortunately, when she woke up the next morning, she was indeed canceled by her entire colony that she decided to um, cultivate. Remember I said she was sort of a doomsday prepper, but she also was a commune slash, uh, Sydney said, a cult <laughs> leader. <laughs> She got canceled because um, when she when she came in to colonize, she thought it was that no one was there. She thought it was just an empty planet with and with the, you can just come in and do whatever you want. But unbeknownst to her and everyone else that she brought with her to, to change this section of the planet, there was an invisible species who could oh. not tell her, get off our land. But when they, they were able, they figured out how to communicate with the humans, she realized that she had indeed moved in and taken over all their land. So she was canceled. She realized that she had nothing for her here. You know, she was canceled by her people. She had taken over some poor species land. Her boyfriend had run off with Barbarella or whatever. And she's <laughs> like, and I had a dream that my sister is lost. I saw her in my head. I have to go find out what happened to my big sister. And that's where she ended up, um, let me see what I had. Yeah, so I had her, she basically packed up a duffel bag full of stuff and took off into the cosmos. Unfortunately, she was hit by a bus. <laughs> driven by, but it was, luckily, I mean, maybe it was a flying bus. Luckily, it was a minor injury on the mishap table. I got lucky there. So she was able to recover but the person who was driving the bus felt so bad that he allowed her to recover in his like um, home. And he taught her all. He told her, I actually own a shipping business. I was late for work or something. Um, what if you worked for me for a little while and, you know, got back on your feet, and made some money? He kind of felt bad for her because he didn't know he also didn't want to be sued or anything. So she stayed with him and she learned like everything from top to bottom, how to how ships are made, how they're sold at the top. So that's where the worker part of her came in. Like she spent a whole term working for this, for this, the guy basically ran over her with his bus. 
<laughs> I really don't know why he was driving bus, but that's the first thing that came to mind. Great. So that's so now she's been there four years and she said, you know what? I, I appreciate everything you've done for me, but I need to continue the reason I left the planet in the first place to find my sister. So that's where she took off, found these three and wherever they are now. She's hoping that at some point she's given some clues because she knows nothing. She just knows that Lucy is out there somewhere. That's all she knows. Great. And yeah, we'll find out how you, you uh, found this motley crew of spacefarers in just a bit. But sitting next to her is who, Seth? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's Ensign Wes Puffer. Damar goes by Puffer. Uh, he is actually really small built, uh, but has uh, got a purple hair shaved up on the side. You can very clearly see his uh, kind of QR code prisoner tattoo on his cheek. <laughs> uh, his uh, kind of bodysuit armor is absolutely pristine. Uh, but over that, he wears kind of a, a kind of a worn purple coat that uh, mostly matches his hair, uh, except it has very nice epaulets and, uh, in black have the instant rank that he had achieved before he went to prison uh, because he was kind of the, the patsy in, in a crime. And that was the last kind of real legitimate thing he did because then he spent a few years in the can where he started running gambling rackets and working as a fixer left that life and did very well as a thief uh, involved in gang wars. So kind of the last legitimate honorable thing he ever did was get his instant rank before his life went to hell. <laughs> uh, so he is probably sitting with his back to something so nobody can come up behind him. And he is mostly watching the crowd, uh, uh, just keeping an eye on where, where everything is. Can I ask how old both of you guys are at this oh, point? Oh, great question. How old? I'm 30. 38. I'm 30. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, we'll leave the two of you there for a moment. Why you're there, we don't know yet. Uh, and let's, uh, let's, let's rove over to the downport. And in one of the docking bays, uh, we see, oh, it's a, an old beat up far trader. Uh, that class A2 that we've seen, that has probably seen better days and sitting in the pilot's chair on the bridge is who, Skid? So you see uh, Ensign uh, Philo Speaker. Uh, he is sort of, he's got his feet, he's sort of sitting in the pilot's chair. He's got his feet propped up on the console, sort of waiting uh, patiently. He has, he's like six foot, Five. He's got like a uh, bel slight uh, belters build from growing up on Earth's moon. Uh, he's kind of like awkward physically, uh, but so uh, yeah, he's he's he got booted out of the Navy after being framed for an accident that killed several people by a his commander, Commander Voorhees, and. He then he tried to join up with some uh, pirates, and they turned him down. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, why <laughs> at some point. Uh, so then he he sort of ended up in the scout service, which is sort of uh, the a shameful thing for him. Like his family, I think his family is a military family going back generations and i think he's actually named after like an ancestor who fought in the U united states civil war like like thousands of years ago so this is a, this this life had been set up for him to be like this uh, career naval officer and he washed out of it and so ending up in the scout service is like almost a fate worse than death so <laughs> he spent two terms of the scout service was able to get promoted twice and he finally was just like, I can't do this anymore. And he left to find a gainful uh, employment, if shady, however shady it might be, and ended up with this with these guys. Um, great. How old are you now? Uh, 34. 34. Yeah. And we, we, I, I, I kind of warned you were going to do this, but uh, what is the name of your ship? 
we can all decide this isn't it doesn't have to get, don't have to make skin the person who chooses mm-hmm. i i have a, a suge- i think we can if we have suggestions we can vote on the suggestions i have a suggestion so er, earlier matthew was, was talking did he said something gambit and i really like the name gambit so i've been trying to come up with something you know something's gambit and then i just literally threw down a random name like kate scambit and nobody knows who the hell Kate is. It's just what was written on the side of the <laughs> show. <laughs> oh, no. so we just come up I with like that. a random name, Gambit. Yeah, Kate's uh, Gambit. I also, I also would love if like the ship was obtained because it was like somebody didn't pay up to this guy, so somebody had like bought a boat for their wife named Kate, and it was like like a yeah. it's like a really nice thing. And then they were like, "We're repoing the ship, and we're not fucking changing the name. It's just yeah. Kate's Gambit." <laughs> I do you want to go with that? It sounds That's, fun. That sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. Kate, okay. the Kate the Farm Trader Kate's Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Great. Uh, all right, and there's and then, like a painting of Kate like on the side. <laughs> <laughs> on the side it's, of the yeah, it's like it's faded really and faded. like scarred. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Happy anniversary written on a banner yeah. that's still hanging for some reason. <laughs> from, <laughs> from, from far away, it looks like Eight's Gambit because the K is like yeah, the so, K is so faded off. Faded. Oh. And I think this could be like four or five owners ago too. Like I think no one remembers like who Kate is. <laughs> You it's know. like the one. It's like the the one. It's like that one car on the used car lot that's a boomeranger. It just keeps coming back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> John um, Voight's car. I just, I just, uh, I, I'm pulling up a photo that I believe our viewers can see too of what a far trader looks like. Uh, kind of a classic traveler ship. It's a 200 ton hull. Um, it has. Uh, what's interesting about the the far trader is essentially a free trader, right? It's a, free, a modified free trader with a better jump drive. So what's interesting about okay. this is that its uh, cap- its jump capability is uh, it's got a rating of jump two, uh, mm-hmm. so it can travel farther, and it also can carry passengers, which I believe G- Gigi or Georgina, uh, Gigi to her friends, was uh, is yes. a steward, right? She's a steward, yeah. uh, so you could. Yeah. You could offer high passage on, on Kate's Gambit. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. Oh, you mean like sell seats in the bus? I have a, I have a little bit of an issue with buses. I haven't gone to Florida <laughs> before it yet. I don't know yes. about all that. You you could sell seats on the bus. We could sell if, seats for money. We could do that if we, if, if we need to do that. We can discuss that later. Yeah. Um, Is Kate's Gambit sentient? Like, does it like talk about us like when we're not around? <laughs> so, if this is a mini series, it would. It would. It would. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you're maybe you're the only one who knows how to speak speak this ship's language. Ooh. <laughs> think, okay, that's a good one. We, we will yeah, that's a we'll good idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we'll leave the downpour and we'll uh, we'll journey out uh, into the wooded area west of the city and uh, zooming down as if we're a camera. We're kind of zooming down into the the past the tree line and maybe sitting in a tree. Perhaps is who Sydney? Uh, sitting in a tree is Artemis Piper. Uh, Ooh. Artemis Piper. So Artemis Piper had a good upbringing. Um, her mom really pushed her to go to university off planet. And Artemis didn't care about school, but she went and she did really well in school. Like re- she just is a very, very smart person, like street wise and stuff, but just didn't care about studying. Um, so while she was in school, she just would hustle at the local bars and just hustle people at hover pool every single night. Uh, and she was paying off loans by doing that. After she got kicked out of every dive bar uh, in the area that the college was in, the university, Rutgers Space University, <laughs> Space Rutgers, um, Space Rutgers. <laughs> she graduated uh, and she went into uh, an agent career as an intelligence uh, agent as a spy. But she only made it one term, if we remember. She uh, got very badly injured on the training course and ended up really messing up her back. She recovered for months, but she couldn't be an agent anymore. And she was like pretty heartbroken about it um, and pretty spiteful. So she ended up going into a rogue career as a thief. Uh, and she was doing really well. She was working for this kingpin who sold stims. And she would basically, I guess, do what we're maybe doing today, like just making deals. Like she was kind of like a courier in a way. But she was like good at it, um, good at lying. But also after one term, she uh, was doing a deal that just went badly and she got cut up really badly on her face and uh, got stabbed and was like left for dead (laughs) and a crew member 
just dragged her to a nearby hospital and left her because they didn't want to get arrested and like they all had drugs on them and stuff. It was a whole big thing. So she woke up in the hospital with short-term amnesia. So she remembered all these long-term things, but like didn't know where she lived, didn't know like she didn't know what job she was doing. So she used to like go to her old apartment continually so many times that like the police were called and they were like, you (laughs) don't live here anymore. Uh, So after that, she was like, she eventually gained her short-term memory back, but she realized like her career as a thief was over, her cover was blown. So she just became a wanderer and she was a drifter and kind of just worked job to job. And uh, she has blue hair cut like at an angle. Um, She never went back to her home planet because one, she's not insecure about the scar on her face anymore, but it's like she's forever changed. Like her career trajectory was changed. She can't face her parents. She can't go back home. She just is not the same person that she was. And she's done a lot of bad stuff. She's not a great person. Um, but uh, oh, wait, I forgot about her romance. Her two professors. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry, I forgot too. Forgot that. <laughs> a serial uh, two- professor romancer. <laughs> <laughs> She's older now. She's uh, my character's forty-two. Artemis Piper's forty-two. Wow. Uh, wow. Which is why she's so injured. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> <laughs> she just kept trying. Uh, but yeah, so she's not old, but uh. She can't settle down either. The professors love her so much, these two professors, and they vie for her still. And she just, she can't, she cannot settle down. She doesn't want the kids, she doesn't want the family. And they do this like, uh, will we, won't we, like let's see each other when I'm back here at this place in time, but oh, we know it will never work out. Uh, So that's where she's at. And she just met up with, uh, well, I'm assuming met up with Puffer, probably, at some point before this and maybe that's how she got looped in with everybody else kind of working together yeah we so seth uh full credit had a great idea we're gonna so we, we, we gonna almost have the exact same hair we might have been in the same gang mine's blue you, or mine's purple yours is blue but yeah yeah so whoa like, yeah. Maybe like we that. are old buddies we walk up and we do like the secret handshake immediately and we're just like oh well, you know <laughs> yeah that's what gangs do, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe met, that's how it works. Yeah. Maybe you had the same parole officer and you met <laughs> yeah. in his office. Yes. <laughs> well, normally you guys would have been establishing your connections rule skills as you went along and how you knew each other. But we haven't done that because uh, we we had only had so much time in the first episode. So Seth had a brilliant idea to kind of do it Blades in the Dark style where we'll flash back to those connections as we need to establish them. Um, but there is one bit of housekeeping I want to do before we get figure out why we're all on this planet and what we're all doing. Uh, but I want you want to pick a skills pack Package, uh, for you all, so you can get a little, little few more skills uh, before we go into this. Um, and I know we've been talking a little bit off air. Uh, it would be useful if we had a, a skills package with engineer in it. Um, so, do you guys want to go with the starship skills package? Sure. That sure. offers astrogation so. one, yeah. electronics one, engineer one, gunner one, mechanic one, medic one, pilot one, and tactics naval one. Oh, that sounds Ooh. good. Okay. Yeah. I could use all of them but medic. That's the one skill I have one. So yeah. any of those is great for me. So basically but, what uh, what you'll do is we go around and we whoever goes first goes first and then you each pick a skill. Oh yeah, you draft skills. You draft right. skills from Yeah, that. Well, I like yeah. it. Okay. So I'm on page fifty of the core rule book if you want to follow along. Um, but Seth, I know you had you had strong feelings about what you wanted. So do you want to go first? You also happen to be top left on my my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah. um, I will I will gladly take engineer since that was his original life quest before he became a, a gambling hardened <laughs> criminal <laughs> so, perpetrator. <laughs> I will I will take engineer one, and I'll figure out which sub engineer that is. So, alrighty. Uh, let's continue in the order you are on my screen because that feels like the most random <laughs> version right now. Skid, what would you t- what would you take? Uh, I think I actually have almost all of these uh, except uh, I I don't have medic, so I I would take medic. Great, um, Alicia, what do you what, you what which one do you want? I think mechanic lines up the best because she was around whatever daddy warbucks whatever he was and she saw like the the shit business from builder to selling so i think mechanic so she's seen things being built so maybe right. that would make sense yeah perfect sydney sorry you're you're we'll do a snake draft so you get to go twice 
Oh, look at me. Ooh. I was going to take medic, but I think I already have astrogation and I already have electronics. Wow. Um, and they're both actually two. I'm pretty good at those. So anybody can have those. I don't need them. Let me do tactics. Uh, and although, does it make sense to pick naval tactics for me? Like, is there a way I could swing that or does that seem outlandish? I mean, we could we could justify anything if you want that. If that's what you want. You know, we can make it that you studied naval tactics, or you apprentice, you worked with a former naval captain on one of your jobs, or what, what is tactics? Naval work ship to ship. Uh, it, it's 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 pretty cool. It's where you actually get to like give pluses, where you're kind of determining what the best course of action. So okay, is. yeah, like a strategist. And then, and then military be like ground. So that's if like we're running around with like pistols in our hands is when military tactics. So naval gotcha. space, got it. Military okay. regular. Cool. Then yeah, I'll do tactics and I'll do gunner because I think she might have gotten up in the mix um, with okay. gun combat. All right. So we got astrogation, electronics, and pilot left. One, two, right. I will take electronics if nobody wants that. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I have electro- I have electronics already. All right, yeah, so yeah, go we'll, for we'll, it. Go for it. Got it. Alicia, what do you? What do you? Let's what, go back. Let's go back. What do you? What? Which one would you like? Should I do astrogation? Even I just don't know how to fit it in. Maybe she just learned astrogation is like the uh, it's plotting jumps, basically. Navi- yeah. yeah. You know what? I'll take it because maybe she studied a little bit in trying to figure out the last known whereabouts. Because, you know, right now she's pretty, like, what do you call it? Uh, Laser focused. But maybe that's how she figured out. So astrogation looks good. Maybe she knows a little bit about the planets. I do have the maps pulled up, so it kind of works out. (laughs) And Skid, what does that leave you? Uh, I I have mechanic. The only one I have... Did someone take mechanic? Nobody took mechanic, right? Alicia took mechanic. Alicia. Oh, okay. Um, You did? Yeah. The first one. You took. You learned it from your your bus driver, dude. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think that's it, then. That's all of them? Yeah, yeah it is. It. Everything yep. okay. for me. Yeah, I don't have okay. anything else. All right. Well, we'll get. You, we'll figure that out. Um, okay. Great. So, all right. Thank you for doing that bit of housekeeping on air. Let's get back <laughs> to the story. So, uh, you all are the crew of the Kate's Gambit, the Far Trader, and you are here on Gardevillas working a job. So, of late, you've all been forced to pick up work from a man you know only as Ames, and he leased the Kate's Gambit to you that you that. Uh, Philo now sits in, though at a pretty steep price. I believe you only had two ship shares when you mustered out of the scout service, right, Skid? Uh, that's right. Yeah, so you were able to use those, but then he, he basically leased this ship to you at a very steep price and an even steeper interest rate, but you really didn't have another choice because you want, you needed a ship. You needed a place to get around. A way to get around. Uh, but he did offer to discount that lease if you did some work for him. Uh, and this connection was made actually through one of Puffer's underworld contacts. Uh, which we'll learn more about later, I imagine. Uh, and you all needed the work. So here you are. And Ames hasn't asked you to do anything illegal per se yet, but maybe you've had your suspicions. But mostly you've pretty much kept your mouth shut and you do grunt work, deliveries, pickups, courier work, enforcer work, whatever he needs. Uh, and today you're on Gardevillas on his behalf to basically execute an exchange. And so per Ames' instructions, you picked up uh, a series of crates that you do not know what they contain. Uh, you flew them onto Gardevillas and you, uh, when you made entry, you reported your, your purpose of your visit as a geological survey, kind of some side work for the scout service. There actually is a scout service base on Gardevillas, uh, but you know, you you just have some extra, the this, this service always has the need for some freelance work uh, and with, uh, with Philo's connections, you're able to kind of use that. Um, and you, uh, so yeah, locked into the secret compartments of your cargo bay were these several airtight containers. And again, following Ames' instructions, you picked a place out in the remote forest somewhere and tagged them. Uh, and you have a meeting set at this cafe and the exchange is supposed to be simple. You provide the coordinates, they provide the payment, and then you're t- to deliver that payment personally to Ames on board his yacht next week. Uh, and in fact, at this moment, approaching the table that Gigi and uh, Puffer are sitting at are two humans. One man, one woman. The woman's probably in her 50s and she has the shaved head and as she approaches the table, you can just make out the tail end of a scar on her neck that disappears into her collar. 
and the man is younger with a flop of black hair tossed back across the top of his head and he he looks at you and he says excuse me is that steel fin soup well, yes it is it might be steel fin soup for the right people and he he and the woman exchange a look and they sit down because you clearly have responded with the correct code word well, she's also got the hair of whatever gang it is that's really prevalent, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all have the same hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a giveaway. Oh, so hey, they, uh, real fast, man, what's the law level on this world? Uh, I can tell you because I pulled it up, but then I pulled the page away. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, give me one second. Also, okay. I'm curious Eventually, as to what... Up, I don't know how indexes work, evidently. Oh, yeah. what, what sector is the planet in also? I would be curious. The Villas oh, yeah. yes. sector. The, you're the, in the Spinward Marches. You were basically kind of on the edge of the Spinward Marches, and I believe you're kind of near the Sword Worlds and near the Rift. Like, you kind of are on the, the, the edge. outer edge. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, this sector, though, has been settled for a long a long time. It's well populated. Um, well, I, does anyone have any kind of... Um, does anyone want to give me an education role to, for some information about the world? I will. Okay. Me too. Uh, I'll try. So you, your education is fairly <laughs> ridiculous. I have right? an education of 15 education. at this point. Like I just kept getting bonuses to it as I was going through. Nice. And I got another one as I mustered out. So you just learn so much. Uh, that is a total of an eight. I also okay. got an eight. Okay. So this is an old colony. It's an old, uh, old colony. Uh, it was settled in the year minus 121. So it's been around for a while, long time. Uh, but it ran into problems very quickly with its government and basically had to appeal to Villas, a neighboring colony, uh, for help. Uh, and there have been tensions, and they basically took over and renamed the planet. Uh, and there have been tensions about that ever since. Uh, it's, it's kind of baked into its history. Um, the, with an eight for both of you, with, that's an average uh, role, you would know that um, the, there has been some political instability. Uh, there has been there. Are, you know, there is at least one rebel force on the planet. In fact, there are more. There's more than one, uh, and there are factions of each uh, within. Uh, and that there is. Uh, you also know that there. So there is a one of those rebel forces called the Tenus Freedom League. Tenus was the original name of this planet, and basically they're separatists. They want to. They want independence from the Imperium. Um, but there's another. Uh, Rebel organization called the the Ine Gavar, um, I N E new word G I V A R, um, and they're considered by the Imperium to be a terrorist organization. Though you would know the truth is a little more complex than that. That's I would say that's probably basically what you know about the planet, and you know about the Scout Service base, obviously. Um, and it's as low level eight, meaning almost everything is freaking illegal here. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Ah, so yeah, you okay. probably Good. don't have your weapons with you if you have weapons if you're out and about. Um, and oh yeah, you would know you would know about the Mosaic Desert. It's a it's a a wonder of this world, and it's supposed to be stunningly beautiful. Yeah. It sounds pretty. Um, <laughs> so these two uh, exchange a look, and they sit down across the two, from the two of you. Mm -hmm. They uh, they notice your epaulets, Puffer. And they say, what are you, some, the, the man says, what are you, some kind of cop or something? Uh, I was just going to kind of laugh and uh, kind of gesture to the prison tap on the side of his face <laughs> <laughs> and say, I never made it in. And yet you wear, and yet you wear the bars. These are the bars I earned before I went in prison. See, they exchange looks—a suspicious look. All right, all right. And the woman is clearly impatient, They're very uncomfortable being in a public space, and she's like, "Can we just, can we just get on with this already, please?" Uh, uh, I would also like to do a recon, see if there is uh, anything they might be wearing, or if they are glancing back at maybe where there might be a sniper they have in position. So, just kind of great. Trying to yeah. analyze. Roll recom. Uh, what uh, stat would you like me to work with that? Um, let's do. I would do social standing weirdly because it's you're kind of right. Does okay. that make sense? Okay. I would do social standing. 
Or so uh, what? No. It's, prison. it's the prison. I'm really thing. enjoying it's the my ex- soup. <laughs> I'm really enjoying your soup. It's a it's a beautiful day. It's a it's a busy yeah. cafe. It's like you're sitting at an outdoor table. It's a nice day. People are out and about. Um, they don't seem to be glancing over their. Sh- I mean, they look nervous, uh, but mm-hmm. they're not particularly like. It's not like they keep looking to like a certain table or anything. Okay. Like winking, <laughs> or, or like glancing at the rooftop next door. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the woman says, can we, "Can we please get on with this? Do you have Do you have the coordinates?" Uh, Gigi's gonna look at them and say, "What's your hurry?" And she's gonna lean back and gesture to one of the uh, waiters to bring over whatever, whatever the whatever we're drinking, whatever they're drinking. All right. Yeah. All right. And while the waiter comes over and. Uh, and looks and, and serves you and takes your order. Um, mm-hmm. We will pop over to the downport uh, and skid. What is Philo doing on 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 the Kate's Gambit right now? Uh, <clears throat> what is Philo doing? I think he's reading Kierkegaard. <laughs> <laughs> he's ancient like, Earth philosophy. Ancient Earth philosophy. <laughs> He's a big reader. He's got a, he's, he is as educated as it is possible to be in the universe. <laughs> so he's just sitting with his feet propped up and he's got, he's got a bunch of like old, uh, just uh, physical books. He's got some first editions. He's got like a, a little library that he's very, very proud of that he like carts with him from job to job, uh, whatever ship he ends up on. Now he's got a little uh, state room, so like his little shelf set up. But uh, yeah, he's reading uh, Kierkegaard with his feet propped up on the console. That might be something you could offer your if you offer high passage like you know we have a library in the state room number two yeah yeah <laughs> but they like must be returned now? in good condition <laughs> um all right so as you're reading kierkegaard for fun no less uh you with your feet propped up uh you have a little over at the sensor station you have a like a jury rigged little like whatever the, ver- the, the space version of a police scanner is yeah. sitting on top of the sensor station uh and it starts it starts to crackle to life and you hear uh, you hear a little bit of, of chatter, and you can make out is like assemble downtown, but do not engage. Stand by for further instruction. Do not approach the cafe. Repeat. Do not engage. Do not approach. What do you do? Uh, okay, I think he's going. Do, do we have some means of surreptitious communication, electronic <laughs> communication, right now I'd available say so, to right? us? Yeah, you're, you're, you could be in com, on comms with everybody. Yeah. Uh, maybe he just sends a text or something, but he's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just Hold send a text. A I'll send a text. <laughs> Is he like, uh, caution, uh, ni- uh, caution, you're being watched. Okay. So, Gigi and Puffer, you receive that text on your comms, your comm units. Okay. Um... Um, Gigi is just going to give the slightest look over to Puffer. Puffer's Did just you get the drink that you wanted? Yeah. Okay. Now, Gigi does not want to sit at this table with his people any longer. It's, it's just a power move to appear relaxed, like she can sit here all day with you, even though she does not want to. Great. So they, <laughs> the woman asks you again for the coordinates. Which, can you please? All right, we're, we've done the niceties. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Coordinates don't, don't know anything about coordinates. Um, now they're supposed to give us just cash, right? What was it? Mm-hmm. You don't know. They're going to give you payment. Okay. Like a restaurant like this ain't nothing free. All right, and they lean. They lean back. And they size you up. Uh, roll. We will roll persuade. I, I I would let you roll streetwise too if if you want to use that. <laughs> okay, I am good at that. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Unlike you, Seth Puffer, Puffer is good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, let me what, what, what uh, stat do you want me to use? I would say do social standing again. Son of a. Oh no. Did it better. I got a six. Okay. Six. Okay. Uh, yeah, these these dice are going away. They just <laughs> yeah. So under the table, you feel uh, a, a basically like like a bag, like a knapsack, being kicked against your leg. But the and you you both feel bumpy, but then you feel you can if you you also hear a boot being laid on top of it. 
coordinates first. <clears throat> Do we look like we were born yesterday? I think the upper hand is held by me and my cohort over here. Don't you think? Should I figure out, is this guy flirting with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the classic flirtatious move. Put on the back move. It's like, what? you have to understand us being mistrustful. We've, we've been taken advantage of a lot as a people. So you understand our caution. But it's all there. Everything you need. Everything your boss wants. Pop or check out the bag. If you want to, up to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Popper's going to try to just say, casually get his hand down, just open the bag and look at. He knows he's being watched, and he's actually really nervous about the fact that these people keep saying certain things that he would really prefer people not to say out loud. So he's like, okay, I'm with a bunch of idiots. And the last time I was with a bunch of a bunch of freaking idiots, I'm the one that ended up in jail. So Gigi, I need to get the hell out of here. I just want to mm-hmm. confirm it looks like it's good. Yeah. And extract ourselves without saying anything incriminating. So I'm just going to kind of reach down, keep my other hand on the table, and just check. Uh, inside the bag, so if you're reaching inside the bag, they lay, they lift a boot and you can kind of reach a hand down. Uh, you feel uh, essentially uh, a bunch of hard drives, a bunch of like whatever the space version of a hard drive is. Data core. Data core. Yeah, there we go. Oh, like nice. they, like, but it's like it's, they're not like not like thumb drives. It's like they've been taken out of like taken out of computers. Okay. Okay. And. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll give uh, Gigi a nod, and I just kind of sit back and sip my drink. Do you uh, do you? Uh, I don't know how you're going to give them the coordinates. Are you going to pass a slip of paper across the t- slide a co- slip of paper across the tail to them or something? <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about having yes, yeah, the piece of paper, but in in a, in a, in a, a sort of like whatever their drink menu is, and then recommend a drink. Oh. Oh, and, uh, uh, and and basically say like say, uh, you know the cafe's busy. You can go ahead and have our table. I really recommend the whatever, whatever. The Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. The Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It comes with a, with a with a, with a live ski lock swimming in it. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you so you you when you and it's like in the the, the coordinates are like in the menu. Yeah, 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 it's basically, it's like it a little hour. fortune cookie sized piece of paper with whatever GPS is. <laughs> okay, great. They, uh, it's a strong drink. It's a strong drink. Yeah. But it's the right drink. <laughs> so the, the woman glances down and looks over at her partner and he, he nods to her and she turns away and she kind of just like starts whispering as if to no one at all. Uh, uh-huh. Meanwhile, <laughs> out in the forest, <laughs> West of the city, <laughs> yeah, we, we find <laughs> Artemis sitting in a tree with binoculars, staring at a, uh, ew, a recent mound of dirt. Mm. And all of a sudden, a group of well-armed and well-soiled figures. Well-armed, are they armed? They're haphazardly armed. A laser mm. pistol here, a shotgun there. But mostly, you'll notice uh, the weapons look kind of antique. Like, they're not particularly new. Uh, you see them approaching the mound, and they find, uh, and one of them carries a data pad, and then he's kind of navigating them as if he's looking at a map. And uh, that person signals to the others, and a couple of them extend folding shovels and begin to dig. I immediately uh, send a message. Uh, I ping Puffer or Georgina, uh, and I say, was the handoff made? Uh, or would they already be here? Um, can Gigi just sort of uh, stretch, like tired, like that was a signal. If you're still looking through the binoculars, you would see oh, Gigi I, go. I can't see you, Gigi. Oh, I'm you like can't? so far away. 
Oh, yeah, she's miles okay. outside the city. She's watching the. She's watching. But, the, I, me- but the, I like messaged you. I like pinged you on like a comm device or something. So if I don't know okay. if you can like answer your phone at the table. I don't know if that's proper etiquette. <laughs> yeah, your phone is blown up. You it's <laughs> kind of, it is kind of rude to text while you're having dinner with somebody. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're on comms. It, it, we probably would. Have yeah, you some, can be on comms. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, some give code me. Word, like, yeah. The, give, the, the, give, the badger is in the. The trailer, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Badger is in the playpen. The bad- really <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds terrible. That sounds, that sounds really horrible. A really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a parent, so I don't know, but I'm assuming the badgers <laughs> yeah. in the playpen the and the <laughs> kids are six feet deep. Give me a cough. <laughs> Give me a cough. Cough one. Such a dark set of codes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I think uh, Artemis says uh, the woodpecker. Uh, the woodpecker is uh, searching. Cough once for completion. Cough twice for a problem. <laughs> Excuse me. The meatballs are spicy today. Um, okay, and uh, as you watch, you watch for a minute, uh, Artemis, and they unearth a crate which you recognize, and they pop it open, and you see like kind of they uh, they uh, kind of the person who like shoved their shovel in and cranked the top open and just stands there in awe, and another one of them comes around and just starts to laugh, uh, and, the, and you know another a bunch of the others just stare. Can I see what's in the crate? Uh, well, you could roll recon. Yeah, I will. Uh, do I have recon is the question. Yes, I have a zero. Okay, so then I just roll 2d and, you and I don't minus anything. I don't No okay. dice modifiers. But I would say this let's give let's make this uh you're going to add the modifier from a relevant characteristic. So, I'd say let's make this I don't know, intellect. You're just trying to see what's yeah. there. Do we have to? Because that one's actually bad for me. <laughs> we'll make it, well, what would you like to roll? <laughs> um, I mean, I rolled a nine, which isn't bad, but I don't know if I would roll education unless it's something pertaining to like something I would have learned about. We can argue you're trying to identify what's in there maybe and you're, you're going to use your skills. Yeah, add your education yeah. modifier. Okay, yeah. so 11 total. Okay, that is uh, as a difficult, as more you basically succeeded the, re- the threshold of a difficult check. And you can see uh, the butts of several state-of-the-art rifles. Whoa. Oh, wow. okay. It's a big no-no here. Here's my question, though. How do I know? We, sh- we would have figured this out beforehand, but how do I know that the people digging it up are the right people if we don't know... If we don't know who the people are? Like, how do I know that it's the right people if we don't know who the people are, what they're getting? Great question. And in fact, at that moment, the woman tilts her head as if she's hearing something in a a tiny micro earpiece that none of you can even spot. She looks at the two of you, Gigi and Puffer, and says, done. Pleasure doing business with you. And with that, the two of them just get up and leave. Rude. Puffer. I I calm them also and and skid too. (laughs) And skid too. Um, And I say, uh, they, uh, or I just say, completed. They were full of. Uh. uh <laughs> you know, did you know that there was a police scanner of us getting watched? Yeah, no. I say completed, and I say, and I say, uh, uh, I'm so full, I'll never go hungry again. And then the line just goes dead and I make my way to a safe spot not watching where they just pick this shit up all right so nearby as uh, the the ship's air raft where you stashed it you parked it basically um so what do you, you just hop in and head and, and get out of there yeah unless like when I was looking they didn't leave anything behind I assume no they're still going through everything too like they're get like they're getting it like pulling all this the crates up they're clearly going to transport them somewhere uh, I feel like should I stick around I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, I'll hang back but, for a, a little bit. I'll hang back for a little bit just to see if anything else gets popped open of interest. Okay, great. 
Uh, and then back at the cafe, I imagine the pack that they left the pack behind, by the way. Uh, what do you got? What do you two do? Or are we uh, going to pick us up or are we going to meet them somewhere? I mean, the plan is where, for where you to get back watched? to the back to the downport, yeah. get on the, and get on the ship. Okay. Uh, okay. I would like to go a roundabout way. Okay. And as, as basically as soon as we get out, uh, whatever is in this, I would like to split it up between me and Gigi and dump the bag. Okay. Smart. Roll. So if, if we could, yeah, hard drives in our pockets or, or whatever, but that's what okay. I would attempt. Okay. Uh, I will let you roll either streetwise or slight uh, or stealth in lieu of a kind of sleight of hand. Okay. Skill. Uh, streetwise. Uh, do you want uh, dex on that? Yeah, let's do dex. Oh, okay. It's a zero, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Oh, 12. Oh, shoot me. 11. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Yeah, so you very, as you're leaving very discreetly, you kind of pull all these data cores out uh, and you kind of slip them in your pockets of your jackets of, and, your, and you ditch the bag and then you head out onto the street. Um, okay. Uh, and as you are walking down the street, kind of in the direction, you have to take a train over to the downport uh, to get your ship. And as you're walking over in the direction of the police station, uh, the train station, uh, you notice that there are some uh, unmarked hovercraft parked along the boulevard that weren't there before. <laughs> uh, both of you roll recon. A brain recon? Is that what either, into, either intellect or, or, or education. Oh, okay. I'm going to roll my education. Ten. Eleven. You both notice somebody in, a, somebody in a, an army uniform with a cup of coffee stepping into the back of one. And yeah. we'll find out what happens next after we oh. take a break from this ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, welcome back. So, yeah, our two uh, lead negotiators, as it were, Gigi and Puffer, uh, just noticed that there are some uh, uniformed personnel, we'll say, uh, lining the streets of their uh, on their their getaway to the the train depot. Uh, but meanwhile, back on the Kate's Gambit, uh, Philo, roll recon. Okay. Can I do education as well? <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is probably not fair at all. Uh, that is a nine. Okay. Uh, with a nine, you see, you notice at the the kind of front. Uh, the front, the front window of the bridge. Uh, you notice that kind of entry to your berth at the downport. That there are some shadows kind of massing out oh, by the no. entry. Okay. What do you do? Uh, he gets on comms and says, uh, "Oh, just a quick update. Looks like looks like Aunt Doris has come for dinner a bit early. I'm going to put I'm going to put the kettle on." And he starts. <laughs> firing up the engines. He starts spooling up the engines. <laughs> uh, okay. You, and you, a message from the tower comes in. It's like, Far Trader, Far Trader, uh, in, in birth in birth 7A, you were not cleared for departure. Uh, and he's going to switch over the comms channel to the tower. He says, uh, not to worry, tower. Uh, just doing a quick engines test. We've got um, got a gremlin that we're trying to uh, pinpoint. Uh, no, uh, no, no, need, no need for concern. Uh, Kate's Gambit out. <laughs> We're all fine here now. We're all fine here <laughs> now. How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> um, okay. Large your... leak, very dangerous. Large leak. What's your... <laughs> so, Skid, what's your plan? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Do you believe? I'm... I'll say. Let's say you all have a code. Uh, just so you don't have to keep improvising a code. Right. <laughs> Let's say you can talk <laughs> freely on your comms. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'm. I'm going to quickly skim through my Kierkegaard book to see if he has any advice. Okay. If he doesn't, uh, I'm going to plan on just taking off and getting out of here because, like, I think that might be the only option. And then if I need to, not knowing what's going on with uh, with GG and uh, I'm not going out, not knowing what's going on over there, I would, if, if I knew there was trouble there, I would fly to them. Do any of you have navigation? Mm. Navigation? Navigation. That would have helped. But no. Why don't you Negative. all? Why don't you all roll it untrained? 
So take, do you have a minus three unless you have jack of all trades. I do have to. Oh, I, I do. have a jack of all trades. That's right. You do too? Yeah. Yay. Yay. Right, well then, ooh. Okay, perfect. You yeah. reduce your penalty for each level of jack of all trades you have. Oh. Uh, 10. Nine. Okay. Nine, 10. Let's roll Oops. nine untrained. Okay. Eight. Those are that's, those are all great rolls. So they're untrained. Um, okay. So basically, let's say you all you you just you 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 know what you were up to. So you discuss three backup uh, backup locations for pickup where you could all rendezvous. Uh, and you're looking at a map now. Uh, so one, there's an island off the coast of the north. Uh, there, that looks like kind of like a fairly uninhabited, but it's close to the city. Uh, and then, of course, there's always the Mosaic Desert to the south, and then there's the lake to the southwest. I so, love the sound. Uh, the, the sound of the desert sounds awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <I'm, laughs> wait, geographically, just wondering, is Artemis closer to any of those, or where's like the forest or in this? You're to the west, so you could get to. I mean, like any, the island is close to the city, so you'd have to come into the city to get to the island. Um, but for you, either the desert or the lake would be would be fine. With the air raft, you shouldn't have much trouble getting to either. All right, so do uh, you want to let them know? You let everyone know you're heading to the desert? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then that's so. Uh, let's, let's switch over to Artemis. So, hearing that, what do you do? You're still uh, watching. Yeah, I think I got to get out of here. I want to know what's in the crates, but just knowing potential danger, it's not worth it. Uh, we made the deal, it's done. So, she's going to head to the desert uh, and just goes, uh, Hope. I know we're not doing coverts, but I want to. <laughs> but she's like, hope dinner's hot for me when I get home. And she heads to the desert. Okay. So then that leaves us. So you're on the air raft heading to the desert. Uh, yeah. Skid, do you take, do you take off? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take off. Tara's like, uh, Kate's Gambit, Kate's Gambit, Far Trader, Far Trader, power down your engines now. You're not cleared for departure. He's not here, man. Yeah. <laughs> Boring <laughs> conversation anyway. <laughs> turns off the radio. No, no. <laughs> takes off. Okay, roll a piloting check. Uh, okay. To take off without, and get away without approval from the tower. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. You can use your education. Okay, uh, eight. Okay, you're fine. Okay. Um, oh, wait, you got to misconsult my cheat sheet for the effect oh. of that roll. So in Starfinders, you, you roll your you roll your check and based on the difference between what the requirement was, like what the DC in a different game would be, and what you roll, that's called the effect. Um, okay. Uh, so you you get away. Okay. But you notice on the the LIDAR as you're going you can see over the sensor panel that you have like a, a like a patrol craft that's following you. Oh okay. All right, well, we'll leave you there. Uh, yeah. GG, because that was yes. mar- marginal success, or, or marginal success, success, but. Um, yeah. So what are you and Puffer going to do? You have to get out to the desert. Yeah. What um, do you actually, do? Actually, GG's sta- walking a little bit away from Puffer, so she's not oh, yeah. really with him. Yeah, they're a little bit separated just because, you know, you know. <laughs> How how far is the desert from the city? Yeah, you would need uh, you would need some sort of vehicle to get there. It's not it's not walkable, and time is of the essence. Uh, okay, probably, probably probably wouldn't be able to call an Uber. Can't call an Uber. <laughs> yeah, it's not like. They, they, Wait a minute. <laughs> Take me to the like mosaic a desert. <laughs> Can we steal one? Sure. Yes. You want to you want to roll recon and see what's what's around? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, can I assume an intellect on this? Sure. Okay. As you might have, might have noticed, I'm a huge pushover at what, what as long as you make a big <laughs> yeah. case for what characteristic you want to use. There's no Troy cool. Valley. that's yeah. for sure. I got an eight, so nothing glamorous. Okay. Alicia, what'd you roll? Oh, I, didn't th- I thought it was just him doing the thieving. That's why I didn't roll. Nine. Okay. All right, so both of you notice... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so you're approaching the train depot. So one thing that's parked at the, tr- the, the train depot is an, uh, a gun skiff. Uh, and the reason you see a gun skiff parked there is because you notice that the train depot is crawling with armed militia members, or military members. Um, but they have parked a gun skiff out front, out, you know, nearby. So that's available. Uh, you also notice a kind of rundown all-terrain vehicle 
parked on a side street. Yeah. What do you think, Puff? As much as I think that gun skiff would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Oh. I think the ATV is probably the safer, less people notice in the chase you've had. But the gun the gun skiff sounds amazing, but I think we should <laughs> go for the All right, I, so we better act fast. The, the, the four by four. All right, so All right. to steal the ATV, I'm going to need a stealth roll, a routine stealth roll from each of you. And then I'm gonna, once you're inside, we're going to need a an electronics, uh, a difficult electronics check to hotwire it. Okay. And did uh, uh, you just to remind you, if you don't have one of them, you can talk about that time way back when, when you got that skill. So. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, Which yeah, I might have I, to uh... do for that time I learned how to drive. <laughs> We're gonna flash back to 15 years old. All right, hands at the 10 and 2 position, son. Oh no. I All rolled right. a 5, which is problematic, on stealth. A 5 on stealth, okay. Yeah. A 9 stealth. Okay, so Ooh. Puffer, okay. You, you kind of look both ways and then you dart over. To the to the ATV, and you make it look like you're just kind of like checking your uh, checking your hair in the rearview mirror, and you actually are just picking the you're picking the lock to get into the car, and you do, uh, and then you wave Gigi over, and you make a run for it, but you uh, you you go to open the passenger side door, but he hasn't unlocked that yet, so you're like so there's a minute there where you're looking at the door, but if you look around, it doesn't seem like anyone has noticed you. All right, so you get in the car, <laughs> get the car, and then. <laughs> Who's gonna roll the electronics check to try to hotwire it? Um, oh, is it electronics computer? Which which electronics is it? Because I have computer. I have electronics like ship, uh, ship and uh, uh, yeah. cars and buses, like uh, vehicles. Buses. <laughs> I have electronics <laughs> breaking into ATVs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. What's up? Let's just let's let's do com- let's keep it simple. In your computers, it's probably I'm sure okay. I'm sure you're not actually like touching the wires together like it's like it's a. Yeah. Oh no, you're, you're you're hacking something. You're hacking something. Yeah, so, yeah it's go like ahead. And- Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want this chain? Or you want me to take it? Yeah. Definitely. Ooh. Seven. Seven Dice is a fail. Seven. Yeah, you want to try? You, you can't. You can't even unlock the car. Puffer, what do you, you want to give it a try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone lock the car. <laughs> well, because I have a nine. That's with your. Bo- that's with your characteristic bonus. Yep. It would okay. have been an eight, but now it's a nine. Okay, you are able <laughs> to hotwire the car, except. The owner of the car seems to be approaching down the street, and is like, "Hey, hey, what are you doing? That's my, that's my, that's my ATV." <laughs> what do you do? Kill him. Kill well. him. <laughs> Kill him. Start shooting. <laughs> Kill Wait, him. He sees, he sees both of us. Yeah, he sees you. He sees two of you, two of you in his car, trying to get sitting in the in this front, the front the front seat. Okay, how far away is he? About no, oh, about oh, let's say uh, thirty meters. Oh, gun it. Let's get out of here. Let's go fast. Even so, if we're <laughs> real fast. Run him over as you're going. <laughs> this is like that time a couple years back when Gigi taught me how to drive a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Because you, because you grew up on an ocean world and maybe you never right. got your driver's right. license. Wheeled vehicles uh, are always kind of interesting to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why did I put him in the driver's seat? <laughs> Do you, what, do you know how to drive? I have I have faith in you. Okay, so <laughs> okay. a couple years back, we were we were doing a job, uh, which is actually lifting some stolen vehicles, and we had to actually get them on and off the ship. And because of that, that is how I got drive ground vehicle. Wow! Wow! Connections rule. Connections rule. Awesome. Yeah, how many bad. of those do we get? How many? What's two. Two. Okay. Yeah. One from one from one from two like one from two other players. Okay. 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 With that in mind. Meaning like two total, but like not from the same person. Okay. Okay. And they have to be a skill that, that that other character knows already, or it can be anything. It can be anything. Okay. Oh. 
Yeah. And it's a full level, so you could actually boost a two to a three or, or anything. Like oh, that. so oh, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, that's really uh, okay. awesome and perfect. Yeah, because I have a drive. So, I have a high drive. Oh, good. Well, I, I made I made a uh, a nine. Okay. So. <laughs> so you pull out and you like you just like you just, like step on it and just start like cruising out of the city, or maybe you do it in a way that doesn't attract too much attention once you turn the corner. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, you all are on your on your way at the desert. However, Skid, Philo has noticed that he's got a patrol craft following him, and you're going to need to shake them. Okay. So uh, I'm going to need a piloting check from you. Oh, bad. Nice I'm a game. decent pilot, <laughs> but I'm a very clumsy man. So, <laughs> general. Oh, no. So let's see. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, eight. Okay. Okay. That is enough to shake the. You didn't. Get, luckily, you didn't get picked up by the uh, the military, but it was just kind of like cop who is like local local lo cop local PD. Okay, uh, so I, I like fly like really low, like maybe over a forest or something, and I, like there's like a I spot like a valley like on the topographical <laughs> like radar, and it's like boom, just like duck into it, and just like Baker's Canyon back home, I just keep like. So by the time he gets up to me, like I'm not showing up on the scans and I'm gone. Okay, amazing. All right, let's uh, skip ahead a little bit. So you're able, uh, Philo is able to pilot the far trader there fairly fast because it's a spaceship and you're you're not you're going you know, you know a little just a, just a ways. Uh, on the the air raft, you get there decently uh, soon as well. So I imagine that Philo kind of drops down at the rendezvous point next to a small cave that you all identified on the map earlier, uh, and then you. Uh, Artemis, you drive the air raft uh, into, you know, you dock, you know, pull up into the cargo bay and dock it. And then a couple hours later, the, you guys come rumbling in on your ATV. Uh, <laughs> allow me Six to, days later. Allow me to read a little flavor text about, the, uh, about the Mosaic Desert. Ooh. So natural Ooh. geologic processes laid down a variety of colored minerals and layers on an ancient seabed. Later, seismic disturbances tilted that seabed and allowed a gentle wind erosion to uncover the layers. The result is, a, is the mosaic desert, endless patterns of brilliant colors. So I think by now it's, to, it's pretty much, you know, we're approaching sunset. So it's not sunset yet, but the sun is starting to dip down. Uh, and so the colors are kind of starting to come out in full force. It's really quite beautiful. I wish I could see this. Oh. This sounds incredible. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys spot on those sensors the <laughs> this random ATV kind of lumbering <laughs> through the sand. And eventually uh, it pulls up to the ship. What do you do? I think Philo has been like standing outside. He knows what direction they'll be coming from. And he's like set up a, a, like a folding chair okay. uh, outside the ship. And he's got his like binoculars. He's like got a head wrap around uh, for stuff from like blowing sand. He's got like his binoculars out, like scanning the horizon for them. Okay. And you guys pull up. Uh, and yeah, what do you, what happens? What do you, when you see each other, what do you do? Okay, I imagine when we pull up that maybe the doors are kind of cool. Maybe we can just decide the doors are cool and they open up like like that. She gets, she jumps out and remember she's about 5'4", so she's like a little toughy sort of. And she's like, this is a, this is a piece of crap, but it got us here. <laughs> oh, air conditioner's blown. It has oh. a Paul Simon <laughs> album stuck in the music player. <laughs> just, <laughs> I knew we should have gotten the gun. We're sweating. <laughs> the place, the ancient, the ancient Earth tune. We built this city. Over and over and over again. Um, uh, I hate classical music. <laughs> uh, Art Artemis I, I is laughing. What, <laughs> we got room in the ship for this car. Actually, yeah, we we would for you sure. Would yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, Thanks, can't be choosers. Let's yes. take our new car into the yeah. ship. <laughs> okay, we can pass the project to work on. Yeah, let's yes. um, go. Promise. Everyone, roll recon. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, boy. See, these are things I don't have, Matt. I think you're purposely Wait. deciding to thwart me. Oh, maybe you, you do though. About that time maybe you maybe do you do have recon. It. Oh, you could. You could. You could through a connection. You can yeah. have recon if you really think you need it. What, okay, specifically, 
What is recon? <laughs> so <laughs> recon like perception and like Pathfinder, right? It Basically. is. I mean, what it really is is more of a like a recon, like surveilling and kind of you know, watching out for things. But we effectively are going to use we effectively use it like a perception. It is a, so it can be a very important skill. Okay, I'm gonna have to think about that connection because I'm already thinking about a different one. So I'm gonna have to rethink that one, but I'll figure it out because I'm, I'm beginning to think I need recon. Okay, yeah, I mean, it does come in handy. Yeah. All right, so yeah, what everyone get on their recon checks? Uh, 11. Five. Six. Three. How'd you do, Seth? 11. <laughs> oh, 11, sorry. Okay, well, that's great because, Seth, you are uh, the only one to notice uh, that there is something coming out of the cave. Oh. It's oh. A, it seems like a pale spine. Yeah, in the rear view mirror as you're like about to drive <laughs> it into, about to drive it up the ramp onto the ship. It's this pale, spinely looking creature who is pretty tall and his, his eyes are very small and cloudy and he has an extremely large mouth. Uh, and I'm, this is- uh, Are you sure he's not just saying Philo? <laughs> he's not just saying Philo. <laughs> and the thing like roars <laughs> and charges at you. Oh, whoa. Everybody, oh, no. everybody roll oh. for initiative. Oh, what? oh no. Oh, Hi. Initiative? What the heck does Would that like happen? to attempt. Are we too deep for initiative? Military ground tactics because that could give a plus to everyone's initiative. Great. Oh. oh. So for for initiative in, in Traveler, you either roll a dex check or an, an intellect check because being smart can help you uh, get the jump or can you smart. can just be fast. Okay. Uh, okay, I got a nine. You got a nine. So um, the effect, uh, does that have an effect? No, it's, it's one. I have to raise everyone's initiative by one. No, yeah, I failed it. I could actually slow everyone down because uh, I'm a oh, moron, but. <laughs> get behind me, get behind me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, so everyone give yourself a plus one to your initiative roll. Awesome. Okay. I don't even think I get a plus one. Hold on, check. <laughs> I have a six. Okay. I got a 10. Okay. I got a 12. Wow. Okay. I, I got a five, if, unless I can get a, uh, my own plus one. So I'm either a five or a six. I'll, I'll get I'm pretty sure everyone else will go before me anyway. Yep. Okay. Uh, in fact, Philo, you get to act first. This creature is kind of uh, approaching. Okay. So he gets the heads up from Puffer and he's just like, Oh, and he, like he he turns and sees this thing, and he's like, oh, and he like sort of fumbles for a second, but he pulls his uh, last pistol out of his out of his holster, and uh, fires a shot. Okay, yeah. So in in Traveler, you get a a minor action and a significant action every turn. Uh, a minor action, for instance, like drawing, and a significant action like making an attack. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna you can go ahead and attack uh, and, sh and see if you hit this creature. Okay, so whoop. Uh, that is a nine. Okay, yeah, he's within. He's gonna be with you know within a range for you. That it would be this would be an average roll. You do hit. Awesome. Uh, so go ahead and roll your damage. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> this thing looks terrifying, by the way. Uh, fifteen yeah. points of damage. Fifteen points yeah. of damage. Oh laser my pistol. god. Laser pistol. Tech level eleven laser pistol. Oh my god. So you wow. You you thinking <laughs> Puffer shouts something out, thinking quickly. You just kind of lean out from behind the car, drawing your laser pistol as you go, and you fire off and you hit center mass. Yes, it is, however, extremely pissed. Okay, uh, it, 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 it tilts his head up into the air and roars a massive roar and charges at you. Uh, however, it is Artemis's turn. Okay, I think Artemis seeing Philo just take a shot, she's gonna pop one off too. She draws her uh, Gauss pistol. Is that how it said? Gauss? I Gauss so. Ga Gauss. Gauss? I Gauss? usually say Gauss. Gauss, Gauss pistol? I guess it could be Gauss. Uh, it's not a laser pistol. She wasn't that fancy nor rich, but uh, it They're is. They're cool though. They're electric. Yeah. Well, I love the look of it. I was looking at the drawings in the books and I was like, hell yeah, this really suits Artemis. Just like, it's like a, it's like a classic sci-fi thick pistol. It looks awesome. It's like a Blade uh, Runner. It's like, a, it's shoot, yeah. it shoots like, like lightning bolts, basically. It's, <laughs> yeah, the bullets really are cool. like, so high powered. Um, Please allow me to degauss a monitor as you do this. <laughs> Same anyway, 
Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take a shot. Great. Um, and sorry, I roll, what do I roll to hit? Gun combat, if you have it. I do, oh. I don't, I thought I had gun combat. Oh, but I can use jack of all trades. You can use jack of all or trades. Or there was yeah. that time. Or, or there, there was, was that, that time. time. Oh, should I? I don't know, I'll hold off, I'll hold off, I'll hold off. I'm, I can't be too I eager. I like that we've, tr- we've, we've turned the connections rule into like something that's like, it's like a consumable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was only a seven to hit. Is that it? It does not hit. So you fire off around from your gospel only to fire. You're just wide. Damn. Um, Alicia, it is Gigi's turn. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Um, where is where's Puffer at this point? Puffer is in the, in the driver's seat. Yeah. He's where? I'm sorry. In the driver's seat Puffer? of the car. He is. Um, Gigi's going to lean over and literally put her left leg on the gas <laughs> and pull out the, uh, that uh, AT into the, the monster. Okay, so you're going I to... I need to have drive, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? For funsies... So the ATV is so janky, it has a minus two to do stuff with. <laughs> What? Oh. Are you used to it like this? Yeah, so I've been kind of looking up. I was going to do the same thing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, great minds. Great minds. Great 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 minds. minds. <laughs> so you stomp down okay. on Puffer's foot. What, is she, what, is she, what do you want to roll for that drive? Oh, yeah. I guess if she was just going to lean, like, grab the wheel and stick her foot, like, on his foot. All right. So <laughs> roll, I, roll drive and you, uh, make it a dex check. Okay, and the good thing is I do have a really high drive, so maybe we'll... Uh, when, when it's my Ooh. turn, can I try to do like a chain, like to assist this? Well, yeah, we can make Ooh. it a task chain. That would be fun. Okay. You have to steer. She just jams your foot down on the gas, but you have to steer it onto the <laughs> ship. <laughs> All right, what'd you, get, what'd you get, Gigi? I got a 10. Okay. Okay, so you're able to stomp down on on on, uh, on Puffer's foot, and this the the ATV just kind of like lurches up onto the ramp. Um, okay, uh, it is now the creature's turn, uh, and both. What's funny is they just drove away with my cover. I was hiding behind the ATV, and they just drive away. Like, ah! <laughs> You're so totally exposed. Like standing there naked. All right, this creature, however, uh, does anyone have biology? I forgot. The, uh, I have science. animals. I have I have handle animals. Uh, or, uh, you don't have science, though, do you? Mm, uh, no. Okay. Anyone want to roll it on train? I for sure will. All right. Yeah. So, so educated, man. So educated, educated, and I got the jack of all trades. <laughs> Uh, that is a nine. Okay, uh, you don't know much about this creature, but you do know it is a Carthus. See, it's called a Carthus. And it's a only- carcass, it's already dead. <laughs> There's no need to panic. The main it doesn't thing- like lasers. <laughs> it does not care for lasers. Uh, the main thing, you know it's a cave dweller, uh, and it uh, is blind is the important, but it, has ah, an, it does have an okay. incredible sense of smell. Uh, okay. So it it's gonna go for either one of you that fired a weapon. I'm gonna roll to see which one. Even skid, odds, Sydney. Okay. Evens. Okay. Oh, so I never messed skid. with them until our our, our pine scented air freshener did the car pulled up and we opened the door. Distracted, distracted. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, it is, it is going to move, it moves pretty quickly. Uh, it's got, and it, Closes in on you, Skid, uh, and it is going to take a swipe with. Or actually, I'm sorry, it's going to try to bite you. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, okay, it just made it. I rolled very poorly. It, he does bite you. Okay. Uh, oof, this is going to hurt. Sorry. <laughs> really? Okay. I'll probably just die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crack die, which is the difference between. Could be the difference between life and death. Okay. Oh, I rolled one, one, two, and three. So mm. oh, seven wow. points of damage. Okay. So Jim. I have my cloth armor on, which is great. Me, that's just damage reduction of three, right? Exactly. exactly. Okay. So I do not die. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I would have. Uh, okay. <sighs> so I'm almost dead, but not quite. Okay. And our endurance is our HP, right? Yes. Um, okay. Basically, Let's... what happens is. 
you take damage to your endurance and then um, you go other to your other physical stats and when all of your physical stats are at zero, then you're unconscious. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Strength, okay. dex, and endurance all together. Yeah. Zero. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Uh, Puffer, it is your turn. <laughs> okay. Do you want a task chain? Yeah. yeah so if, so if, if Gigi got a 10, that means I get a plus two, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, because the effect, let me just check my cheat sheet here. Uh, Oh, well, no, except that it, because she was trying to do something difficult, actually, the margin was zero. So she hit she hit it okay. exactly with a difficult check. So, okay. yeah, sorry. The, you get She's a plus not helping, zero but well. she ain't in the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the door open. <laughs> okay, let's see. I am, and and uh, we're going to try to, like, run this thing over. Is that the, is that the plan? That was my plan. Oh, I thought Just you were trying to drive it up into the ship. Are you trying yeah. to run it over? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. We're going to buy them for tea. That's harder. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to say this if is... it was easy, uh, we wouldn't be playing it. I'll say it's <laughs> difficult because because you already have that minus from the from the ATV being not Plus, maneuverable. like, I mean, the way we've... You'll have to, like, swing around because it lunged at me. So mm. it's, it's attacking me. So you'll have to, like, swing around and then hit it while it's biting me. Oh, look like in back horn. into it. Let that let that that blind son of a bitch hear this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mm-hmm. six. Yeah. So just six. Okay. <laughs> You're in denial. Like, you, hesi- eh, you hesitate eh, there, like eh. there was more coming. Like right. six, but <laughs> okay, just six. A six. So you were unable to maneuver the lumbering ATV around to kind of get at it. Um, it's got the turn radius of like a half mile, man. I, mean, <laughs> I have to circle the entire ship just to get to it. <laughs> we tried. Um, okay, Philo, it is your turn. So you are now in close combat with this with this creature. Okay. That's so fine. you can make melee attacks. Uh, you can't attack anyone else, uh, and you can only use uh, melee weapons or single-handed range weapons, or you can use a larger weapon as a club. Okay. Well, I do have, I have my pistol, so I can I just I can fire it. Uh, I think in you can just melee. fire it point blank. Try to hit. Okay. It. Yeah. Just he's try as it's biting, like he he screams out in pain as this thing takes a chunk out of him, and he tries to put the last pistol like under its chin and and just pull the trigger. <laughs> Uh, oh yes, uh, twelve. Okay, yeah, you, you, you with uh, that is. I'm gonna give you a uh, the effect of that roll. Oh yeah, it's just gonna be a success. Okay. Well, the the effect he would add the damage. So what did he need to? I mean, he got it. He he hit it. Uh, he I was gonna make it an average check, and then he hit, he okay. just went two over. So the the marginal effect of that is just a regular success. Okay, but still uh, nineteen points of damage. Okay, so this Whoa! thing charges you. You know, Puffer is trying to maneuver the ATV around to get you to, to ram it with the car. It but, like it probably like dodges around the car to like get to me <laughs> as it's as they're trying to run it over. And then it's a and bus. It, maybe it bites you like right on the shoulder. It's like yeah, on the, but you're not your shooting arm. Yeah, and then you just shove your pistol into its wide open mouth and fire and just blow its head off. <laughs> oh. Yes! yes! Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> okay. Ew! It imagine. Drops to his knees. Oh. I dropped my knees, bleeding. It's so You're many covered teeth. In guts. Yeah. Be careful, because the teeth are probably flying everywhere. It's got yeah. so many teeth. Like, I, oh, Artemis like shields her face from all the <laughs> flying teeth and Watch guts. your eyes. <laughs> Um, okay, that uh, you have killed the Carthus. Everybody, roll recon. Oh, again. why? No reason. Uh, There's always nine. a reason. Ten. Oh no, eight. Because I'm eight. minus one. Because I have eight. Yeah. Six. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're probably Philo is probably still clutching his shoulder in pain, but. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're either Puffer and uh, Gigi are still sitting in the car, uh, and you can see wrangling each other like <laughs> this. You know, <laughs> go, go. Uh, we, we were like we we're like a married couple on like day three of a road trip. <laughs> I need to back up, like I told you to, Puffer. 
I, I can't wait to see more adventures with this odd couple. Um, <laughs> well, you look at what you look out, and uh, the sun is now setting. And it's this fiery sphere kind of dipping beneath the line of the horizon and setting the mosaic desert now just fully ablaze in this gorgeous display of like, just like a vast spectrum of color. And it's, I mean, like I was saying before, it's, this is really something. It's like a wonder of this world. Uh, and you've traveled all over chartered space, but still like it's, it's something like this, even after this moment of intense danger that this still has the, like, the ability to surprise you is, I mean, it's kind of cool, right? I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. However... Mm. As you're looking over at the horizon, you notice against the kind of fiery backdrop of the setting sun, ships, and they're heading your way. So what do you do? I'm going uh, to drive the damn do they, they don't see us. Up the ramp. Well, <laughs> this thing's worth a hundred grand. <laughs> uh, well, actually, does anyone but me have first aid? Does anyone else have first aid? I have, I have medic. Myself. I could probably Our tend to my own wounds. Like, uh, no. Um, you, I don't know that you have time to deal with that right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Artemis with the binoculars again uh, turns around and uh, she says, all right, time to get in the ship. Everybody in the ship. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. And she uh, Okay. Gigi, thank you for the lesson. Philo. Can you drive this in there? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get out of this car. It's hot and it's sweaty. It's making me sick. All right, so you <laughs> shove. For no reason. <laughs> you her out the side and you slide over into the driver's seat. You uh, drive it up onto the ship. Artemis helps Philo and she's like, you're good, right? Because you got to fly this thing. So yeah, you, yeah, you're good. Uh, you're good enough. Uh, okay, let's go. I'm, uh, oh, no. Oh, God. It hurts when those things bite you, doesn't it? Ah. <laughs> And oh, it bit you? Yeah, it bit me. Like, right. Oh, look. no. Oh, you know what that means. What is you're going to still have to fly the ship, so oh, get in the ship. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. I thought there was some xenobiology lesson. I was God, about to learn a horrible let's lesson. Go. Okay, so, yeah, he's like grabbing his shoulder, holsters his pistol, and maybe uh, with with her help, he's going to uh, stagger uh, back up to his, uh, put the, the, the pilot's chair and get her, get her ready to go. All right, so you, so right. Artemis helps uh, Philo limp to the, or like get to the bridge. Uh, mm. Gigi and Puffer drive the ATV up, or I'm sorry, Gigi drives the ATV up onto the cargo bay. <laughs> and then Puffer, you come running up behind, you slap the control pad to retract the ramp. Uh, and then you spool up the engines and uh, blast off. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So uh, where, is everyone, where is everyone setting up on the ship? What are, your sta- um, what are your stations? Do we have guns on the ship? Is there a gunner station on this type of ship? There is a far- turret, right? Is there? Uh, uh, I'm looking now. Weapons? No, there's not. Are there? Yeah. Are there hard <laughs> points? Like How many hard turret. points are there on a far trader? Maybe two mm. on a, a far trader. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, can I have the comm? Since I've asked for navigation, can I have the comm? Like right at the, I mean, I'm, of course I think there's, Star Trek, so I'm like right there at the... <laughs> Yeah. Do we have to go by the crew name? So there's pilot, astrogator, engineer, medic, and steward. Do we have to follow those for this specific type of ship? Sure. Or I mean, like, if you want us to be on the bridge, or you're just like, no, I'm down, you know, I'm down in the engine room, or whatever oh, you gotcha, want. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Bridge. 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 I'm astrogating. Uh, I'm on the bridge. All right. This is so. why I'm never in on any of the inside jokes. The three of you are on the bridge together. <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck in the back. <laughs> oh, so, Puffer, you're heading back to the engine room. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so what's is so? Let's say you you the ships are in pursuit, but you're able to basically blast off and uh, head through the atmosphere and out of this world and into space. So you're back out in open space. So what is your plan? Um. Well, I mean, GJ wants to definitely ask Artemis. Were you able to get a look at? anything that we just traded just out of curiosity in those crates. Oh yeah. But first I want to see what they gave us for what we gave them. Cause that was a big, big trade we just pulled off. I mean, wh- where's the bag? I gave mine to Puffer. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, well, we had it in my bra. He had some in his jock. <laughs> <It's> jock. <laughs> Uh, I forgot we took him out of the bag. That's right. <laughs> okay. Where, <shit. laughs> let me ask you this question. Where are you going to go? <laughs> yeah. 
should we, uh... Should we just head back to, uh... The boss? Or, I mean... Should we lose him on our yeah, trail and not make the vehicle so hot? Like, what are we trying to do? So, yeah, yeah do we need to jump to where our, uh... Our boss is? Where is... Uh, yeah, where is it, Ames? Where is uh, Ames? You'll need to astrogate. Let's fly out to jump. Just to jump. We gotta okay. Leave. Question. Yeah, let's do stuff. Just a general space travel question. If we jump... Is this like erasing our trail? Like they can't follow us through a jump or like? I'm so glad you asked about this, Sydney. Uh, I would know, I would know about this. For sure. So yes. Skid or Seth, do you want to drop some nerdage about how jump travel works? Or do you want me to, uh, you want me to do it? Um, <laughs> I defer to Seth. It, it I, depends I on which level of nerdage. So how jump travel works is you basically rip a little hole in the universe as you enter a jump bubble uh, for like 156, it's a week. Um, and then the jump bubble pops and you come out at your destination, hopefully. Um, and it is possible with very, very powerful sensors to make a guess as to where you're going. When you also mix that with, we're pretty sure we know what size jump drives they had and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, maybe... Uh, and I think this was a Type A starport planet, wasn't it? Uh, I Type B, I think. B? I think Villas is, probably, is A and Garda Villas is they B. They probably can't. So we might need to jump somewhere else or make a badass yeah. astrogation. Either way. Um, what if we jump somewhere close by? I mean, close yeah, to like Ames, Ames yeah. but you not directly to Ames. Well, the one, the one thing... The jump is always a week. That's yeah. the thing. You have to meet. Gotcha. You have to meet Ames in a week. So oh. let's jump to Ames so there's no confusion <laughs> and nobody thinks that we're going back on the deal. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I want to add is that uh, yeah. So <laughs> the, my my so two things. One is like your ship has a rating of jump two, so you actually can go two parsecs in one jump. It still takes you only a week, which is great. Um, but some ships can go up to like five. Uh, you know, the the uh, capital ships and kind of seven. Like I think is it seven? jump seven is the highest one. You're probably six. right. Or six jump six. Um, so the, uh, other, my other favorite fact about, so the other thing, when you're in jump space, when you're in that, you rip a, you kind of go into this bubble and you flood it with oxygen and you know, I'm sorry, not oxygen, hydrogen that you mine from either a gas giant or some water and refined, uh, you're kind of, you're in a separate universe. You are like literally cut off from everything in charted space and you're hanging in this pocket dimension, pocket dimension uh, from which nothing can escape and you can't communicate with anyone and not even with psionic means so you could it's really cool you're like totally isolated for that week um yeah and the other important thing is you uh like seth was saying you got to get far away enough from the sh from, from a planetary body you have to make it you can't make a jump closer than 100 diameters from a planetary body because gravity can cause the bubble to collapse prematurely and you kind of jerking you back into normal space um, and we collapse with it we the whole bubble collapses and we just end up Forever. Not necessarily. Yes. Yeah. You just pop out into normal space. However, okay. you can also miss jump, uh, which is really, really delightful. Uh, so if <laughs> usually caused by a lack of maintenance or unrefined fuel, but many miss jumps are lethal. Uh, basically, the bubble closes, collapses early for some reason, or time in the bubble flows differently. So trillions of subjective years can pass inside the bubble and all that emerges on the other side of the jump is just hard radiation caused by the protons exceeding their half-life. <laughs> wow. Wow, is, you know, I didn't know that. A way to go. Um, oh, that's so horrible. We I'm can sure, die? Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine though. People do this all the time. <laughs> we die, episode one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay. How much fuel is in this? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Okay. I'm really good at astrogation. And Artemis says this as we're getting ready. Don't worry, everybody. As we know, I'm really good at astrogation and I only fucked up that one time. <laughs> Gigi, I will pay you back for that. I'm just waiting on some cash to come in and I'm like, so sorry. I'm so sorry about your dog. Anyway, um, okay. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm feeling good. How's everybody feeling? That makes two count. Didn't we already ascertain that one of your lovers was one of the ones that hit me with a bus? <laughs> yeah, but wait, wait. The first bus for the guy that you worked with or the second bus? The first one. The whole reason buses? I'm in all this. <laughs> You've been hit by two coaches. 
right. Gigi's well, got well, really with... bad luck with buses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, she has a thing. It's a whole buses. thing. I'll cover it in therapy next week. Okay. If uh, I ever get out of here. If you get out of here. So <laughs> what you're gonna do? So while you while you're flying away from to get to that 100 diameter plus distance away from a planetary body, customarily that is the time that the jump gets plotted. So okay. what's gonna happen is you, this is another task chain. So the effect of the first check affects what happens in the next check. So astrogator, who it sounds like Sydney, you're gonna make this check. You have to make an easy astrogation check that takes 1D times 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, you have to, and it's modified by the distance of the jump. So four parsecs would be a DM minus four, but you're just going, I think you're, you're going two parsecs. So take a minus two for that. Okay. Do I um, add anything to astro, do I add any skills to my astrogation or is it just my astrogation level? Uh, you can, yeah, astrogation or, in, and then you could add your intellect or your education. You can make a case for either. And sorry, when I have a two in a skill, what am I adding? What's my bonus? Two. Two. Oh, okay. okay, so then it evens out. Cool. I have no minus then, technically. But then, if you want to add your education modifier or your Top. intellect, so yeah, so well, you just have, to, you just have yeah. to get a four or higher. Oh, okay. I already rolled a uh, seven. Great. Okay, so so <laughs> Artemis sits down at the astrogator's chair and starts even it starts plotting your jump. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, and then it turns to the engineer because now the engineer has to spool up and fire the jump drive. So, oh. would you you roll a seven on yeah. that? Uh, plus my, uh, can I add education or is it just intellect? You can do either. Okay, so a nine total. Okay, so a nine for an easy check. So that's a, a that's a, a bonus of plus five. So that's a that's a success. So what happens now is that the engineer makes an easy engineer parentheses jump drive J drive check uh, modified by the t- task chain of the original check. Okay. Uh, so first thing I would do is uh, we divert power. So lights oh, yeah. dim. The, the <laughs> microwave turns off as we're <laughs> spooling up the jump drive. <laughs> I love this part. I always think of, do you remember Battlestar Galactica, the Cylon ships where she would always oh. kind of, it was almost this orgasmic like jump where she would like throw oh, yeah. her Jump, jump. <laughs> yeah. So every yeah. time we jump. <laughs> yeah. Before you roll, Seth, before you reveal the result of the roll, I'll roll say, okay. uh, Gigi, let's say you're sitting at the sensor station. Yes, so you're I watching. Am. You're watching these ships g- gaining on you because they are faster than you, and you're just there as you're covering this distance. You're just like praying you're going to be able to get to the jump distance before you can. But you notice something mm. strange. All I hear sh- something or see something. You see it on the lidar screen. Is that all of a sudden these ships are breaking off and they just abandon their pursuit of you? What is that? And then you see several more contacts on the lidar screen. In fact, quite a few contacts. Maybe. A dozen of them. Uh, What's going on here? You notice too, because you recognize this instantly, that they all have transponder codes of the Imperial Navy. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh. It's a battle squadron, (laughs) or a batron, or a batron in 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 traveler parlance. And you have an incoming message on all frequencies. It's like, far traitor, far traitor. Power down your jump drive and prepare to be boarded. Uh Oh. And we'll, we'll see you next week. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, no. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Already? Wow. Already? Wow. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, this is cool. This is almost because we don't record for like a week. So this is like a jump. Like we have oh, like. See you on the other side. We let the jump. We let the jump. See you Everyone on the other side. Okay, fun voyaging your jump. Yes. Wow. Good luck on your jump. Yeah. Very okay. excited. Right. Very excited and frightened. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, everyone. See you later.